Hi, welcome to Hook and Chat with Annie Garumi and our friends at Hobium Yarns. Hi friends, it's Annie from Annie Garumi and we are in week three with our friends at Hobium Yarns for Hook and Chat. It's uh, going really well. I saw um, some of the comments because it was just released when I'm recording um, this one yesterday and um, it's really heartwarming to see your comments. Thank you so much for that. And I really enjoy chatting with you, even though I feel like every week I'm not saying anything that interesting or new and sometimes not even that yarny related, but thank you so much for receiving me as a friend. I really appreciate that so much. And actually it feels like I'm having coffee or I'm having a little hook and chat with you as well because I get to read your comments later, which is really fun for me. I wanted to show you the progress on my friendship blanket and a kind commenter um, said that basket weave is a yarn eater and I have to totally agree with that compared to my simple stitch blanket. I am just about finishing up my second ball. I think it's my second ball. It must be my second ball because I only have this one yarn end here. So it's my second ball and I when I was remeasuring the um, the width of the blanket because I'm working on the length, the width of the blanket is about maybe like 70, 72 centimeters long, 70-ish. It's a little bit shorter than my Tunisian Tunisian simple stitch. And then uh, I am, um, I'm finishing up my second ball. And the length of this is about 20, 22 cm. So I saw another comment saying that it's really hard to follow a blanket pattern and buy yarn for it because uh, the they don't really specify how much yarn that you need. So I'm uh, that's why I'm working on it right now <laughs> every week with you so that at least if you get this yarn, the one that I was talking about, the Camilla Batik by Madame Tricot Paris, at least you kind of have an idea or maybe you're going to make something else and then this can kind of help you with the gauge. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on this one here while I'm talking to you. And let's see, where do I start? Oh, here, I start over here. So that way we can get on with our week three. So. Uh, yesterday, uh, you know, this is going to be posted later, but yesterday it was posted and it was really just so nice this morning when I woke up and I saw, saw your comments and it's, I, I'm just so touched. <laughs> I'm so touched that you enjoy the series because I was actually really worried because I don't want to make something that, that you won't enjoy because um, before I was trying to hustle and make videos of tutorials and I'm kind of like a one woman operation over here because I'm I'm pretty much sitting at my sofa and, make, and making these videos with my, my iPhone and I, you know I'm just using what I have and I'm still learning about um, video editing as well as um, trying to make better tutorials and you know I still have a lot to learn so I don't want to make it sound like I'm a teacher I'm I'm not I'm I'm just a friend who is sharing what what I've learned from other friends so thank you so much for really just um being so kind with your your words and being so encouraging I'm very excited about this because I was I was thinking oh goodness after like five episodes um if you if nobody ends up liking it, then maybe I need to reconsider um, a new plan, which, you know, that's that's part of getting better, right? Like evolving, just seeing, you know, what people like, what people don't like, and then changing, right? So uh, I'm very pleased that you like it. So, and I'm trying to think of some, some stories. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> My son just sneezed. Um, uh, last night, we were taking some of my amigurumi that um, that we I made in the past, and my son and I were throwing it at each other, like <laughs> like a like what 
like a what? Maniacs. Like maniacs. <laughs> yeah, we were like throwing it at each other and I was like, don't hit my head. I'm wearing glasses. Don't hit my head. <laughs> and it was really fun. We had music playing, right? We, we were playing music and we were throwing the balls at each other. It wasn't balls actually, the amigurumi. One was an egg. <laughs> it was really fun. And I, it was just a nice, nice thing uh, to do with some, some old dolls that I had made for him. And what else has been going on? You know, since we just stay home, right, because of online learning, there isn't, you know, much that happens <laughs> on a daily basis, like all the same every day. And um, mostly it's just, you know, in between when I can, I, I film these videos and and then I edit them later. You know, it's like everything is just like in between whatever I'm doing for him. And today is a little bit different because I'm actually recording it in the morning and it's, it's the lighting is much better in the morning. I, I see sometimes morning is hard to do, especially it, it's like, uh, you know, he, he needs to be online for his classes and I can't really, you know, record when his teacher is talking, but yeah, what else has been going on? I, I think in the last episode, I had showed you my ox, um, that I was selling and I didn't end up getting many pre-orders, but that's okay. And you know, um, yesterday was the cutoff for the, um, pre-orders and I, I got two, which was re really nice. And, and currently, although I don't know when this, this video is airing, um, it probably, probably not. I don't, I don't think the sale's going on anymore, but Hopium has this up to 50% off sale going on as I, you know, as of the recording of this date. And I, I shared a shipment with my friend who lives here locally and she's uh, buying some yarns and then I said I said oh I'll split shipping with you <laughs> and then I bought some yarns too but mainly I just bought the cottony the, the colors that I don't have as well as um, as the mink yarn that was on top of the ox so yeah I am trying to design some dolls in my series that I have coming out soon. Well, I shouldn't say soon. I always say soon. It's like as soon as I have time <laughs> to have have an actual like block of time on a consistent basis to design. <laughs> so um, I'm hoping to do that. And also I'm trying to hustle on these blankets because I want to get them to my friends soon. I am very excited. This one actually seems it seems really nice because it's nice and thick. And the other one is like feels like something my my son would like more. I would like this more because I I'm cold all the time, but he's hot all the time. So the thinner blanket would be better for for him, but uh hopefully my May's kids will will like these and <clears throat> Even if they're not useful, I'm sure when they're sitting on the sofa or reading, maybe they'll cuddle up with it. That that makes me feel really happy. So I was thinking of, I think I mentioned in the previous videos that I'm thinking, I'm already thinking of the next blanket. And I think when I do, maybe I will also do another Tunisian crochet, but maybe a different stitch. And there's also a stitch I want to do um, for a blanket. Oh, is it called? Is it called moss stitch? I cannot remember what it's called, but it's beautiful. It just looks like little V's, and and then you V into the chain space. So I, you know, when I remember what the name of that stitch is called, I will upload a tutorial um, when when if and when I make another blanket. But for that one, I definitely need a um, a thicker yarn because when I was doing it with this one, it was just so thin that it was really impossible for it to um, grow. <laughs> but I think it's good for a blanket that is not um, 
too dense so if I could just this one is quite thin if I had maybe something that was double this size I think it would be better and and maybe next time if I do cotton maybe I will do something that's not mercerized just for a different look and feel because this one is like gorgeous and variegated and beautiful with many many colors but I think maybe next time I will try something that's not variegated and choose my own colors so now we're hitting the 10 minute mark so I'm going to switch over to my other project and I'll be right back hi friends I just grabbed my other blanket and I think because of the drape this has stretched a little bit and the width of it you know I'm working on the length right but the width of it is 88 cm oh boy it's, ha it's grown quite a bit and then the the length so far I'm still using two balls is 20 oh my let's see third let's see 30 34 34 cm oh, so it's actually making good progress because it's it is not that dense or thick so this yarn is really maximizing itself very well so I feel like I might not need more than six <laughs> uh, the other blanket is shorter oh boy yeah so one blanket will be bigger one blanket will be smaller <laughs> this is this is how it is how it is I'll just try to make the other one a bit longer so that way you know it can be similar <laughs> Ah, so I was, I'm happy that I switched over because my hand was hurting a little bit from the other yarn. So um, I saw that some people were saying they were doing their own Tunisian crochet projects and that's so, <clears throat> so, so cool to me. I've only made a few Tunisian crochet projects before. I made a, um, I made some jumpers for my son. I made a long sleeve one as well as a short sleeve. No, not short sleeve, a tank top one. And I also made my my auntie a a tank top one using a fancier Tunisian crochet stitch and I've made tons of scarves in just in simple stitch, but <clears throat> the thing with um simple stitch and I'm sure that you'll find that simple stitch will curl very, very easily. And so I am using a hook that is ridiculously bigger than the recommended uh, hook size of, of the yarn because I want an extremely loose, loose tension. And so for me, that works. I don't know, maybe some people that have more Tunisian crochet experience than I do uh, please chime in in the comments because I'm always willing to learn because um, you know I am no expert by any means but a fun fact is that you know I learned actually Tunisian crochet first before I learned crochet back in like 2000 2001 or something 2000 maybe I actually in the crochet world I learned that and then maybe around maybe around when was it like nine, 1998 I think it was like 1998 1999 not not many years prior to that I actually learned how to knit first but I am just a one kind of knitter I make scarves or I make jumpers <laughs> that's it simple raglan sweaters top down I cannot make anything else and I've tried and it's just I think it's just not my my crafting preference because I, I just I'm so awkward holding so many so many needles and especially when it's the sleeve I know you can do um circular needles like a, like do that uh, what is it called where you're pulling pulling the cable and and things but I'm just I'm oh, I just like I get so stressed out like even pulling the needles I'm just like oh no it's like or the cable of the needle sorry of the circular needle and um I just end up using double pointed needles and even that I get stressed out because sometimes they'll just slip right out of the stitches and I'm like ah <laughs> but um yeah I try to make a a jumper for my son or some kind of a a, a a garment for my son once once a year and this year I 
I, I don't think I've made one for him, but I don't think I did. I don't think I have the right yarn because um, he cannot wear wool because he is so hot and wool makes him very sniffly. So I, and actually acrylic too, I don't know why. Like um, maybe some of you can chime in, but like um, I'm okay with acrylic and wool, but for some reason him and my husband, they get the sniffles, like slightly, feels like they're slightly allergic to it. So I might just make, um, I might make a cotton, maybe like a cotton shirt, like a raglan style again. And it, it doesn't have a pattern or anything. I just, you know, I just do a, like, you know, a rib stitch. I knit a rib stitch that would fit his collar. And then I just keep in increasing. <laughs> uh, I just do the math so that, you know, the increases are like the front, and front two and then back two, and then it turns into the sleeve. So if, if any of you are, are avid knitters or avid crocheters, um, much more advanced than me, probably know better like exactly how many numbers to do, but usually mine is just like, eh, I measure it up to you. Okay, that looks good, okay. <laughs> and it's kind of like a trial and error thing. And um, yeah, so I've been working on this blanket as well during online learning and it's growing slowly, but it's definitely, uh, using up less yarn than the basket weave one. So yeah, I really like the color, the colors of this. This is like my style right here. I love, I love these colors. If there was some kind of like pale blue or pale peach in here, it would also be some of my colors too, because I love any kind of pastel, pastel colors. I was trying to think of a, some kind of a funny story to tell you today. What is a funny story? Maybe Bob? Should I talk about Bob? The pigeon? <laughs> yeah. Um, my son and my friend Jamie, the same friend that helped me with that crazy plant in my first episode, uh, was uh, telling Jamie, we were telling Jamie about this story. And uh, for many years, as long as I can remember, since we moved into this place, um, a pigeon would always visit our window <laughs> and he would just coo and just not leave and like he would poo on our plants. yeah he pooed on our plants too but that's what birds do right and I was I was always shooing him away go away go away and every morning before we even wake up he would coo and wake us up <laughs> coo coo or something <laughs> Yes. No, I don't think he's like that in two no, and nine. Him. Really? And then, um, I don't know, after many years of this, me like always like, you know, like, go away. And I would clap to make him, he would not leave. And you only <coughs> slam the window. Yeah, sometimes I would slam the window shut and then that would make him fly away. And then um, anyway, my son and I, um, when, you know, the pandemic hit, we, he ended up having online learning and as a project for us at home because you know we couldn't really we couldn't go out i mean not that we can go out now but it was e even worse back then in hong kong when it first came here and we ended up making a book and I, it was just like a story about um bob the pigeon we named him bob because we we thought it was just like the most suiting name for him like the most like I don't want to say ordinary name, but you know, like just like a normal, normal name we yeah, to humanize. Just go to other oh yeah, and then he'll go to other people's homes. And if I if I can find a book, I'll try to um, I'll insert it here or, and I'll read it to you, <laughs> to, like for those that are interested. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a funny book. It made and then we gave it to his um, teacher because uh, we were like, ah, oh, you know, I turned it into a, like a PDF book like an ebook format and he, and she shared it with everybody at school and they thought it was just so funny so I'll you know I'll, I'll insert it maybe maybe at the end of this video I mean it's like already it's already it's almost nine minutes that I've been talking already it's going by so fast so maybe I will end this video um here because I've just done one row but um yeah I will I will insert the video here bye us Bob is a pigeon. He visits our, our window for vacation. Bob also has an umbrella. 
He also has a little red hat. Bob waddles as he pecks at our window. Not nice, Bob. <laughs> Mommy says, shoo, shoo, but Bob did go. But did Bob go away? Shoo, shoo. No, his yellow umbrella and his little red hat stayed with him by our window. Bob visits other people's homes too. Okay, you and Bob must be friends. The end. So I want to thank you so much for watching Hook and Chat with me, Annie Gurumi, and our friends at Hobium Yarns. I, I really do hope that you continue to watch and it's something interesting and something that provides you with a, a little bit of friend time and maybe you don't have any right now since we're all staying at home. So I hope I see you next week and yeah, go ahead and comment in the comments with anything, like anything yarny related, mommy related, non-mommy related, pet related, oh. pigeon related. <laughs> Just kidding. You don't have to talk about the pigeon. It's fine. Yeah, I said yarn. Yarny related. So, yeah, I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much again, and we'll see you on YouTube. Bye! Bye.